So morning guys, back out on the road with RB looking at this. This is the LXR125. This is the white and blue version. Engine's running at the moment so I can show off these headlights. So this is in full nighttime mode at the moment. Those two Hawk lights on at the front. And we've done loads and loads of these. It's going to have to have a clean when it gets back because obviously I'm going to get it very dirty. Nice stainless can to the rear of this and I do like those blue trims that they've got to the front and the rear tyre on this. Lovely wide tyre on these as well, on these LXRs. This is running the 160, 70, 17 on the rear. And then you've got the standard uh, 110, 70, 17 on the front of these. So we're going to take this one out, give it a run and get the test mileage on it at the normal 40 mile an hour that we do. Now obviously today, as you can tell from the skies, is chucking it down just some fine drizzle at the moment it was absolutely hammering it down about half an hour ago we've waited for a dry spot and I'm all kitted out in my nice high-vis textiles so get this one up to speed and we're going to change the route up again slightly slightly different route again this morning so we're going to do the hill first do my little check up the hill for pulling power down the other side down the dual carriageway and then we're going to finish off with some urban and it's been a while since I've got out on one of these LXRs so this one's going out to our customer Scott and this video is for the purpose of to show him the bike is being ridden correctly now obviously these roads are very very wet, lots and a lot of standing water in on that combined braking system. Now we always say on these, if you are riding in the wet use the CBS, use that combined braking system to pull you in. Try and avoid being on that front brake, although you will get a lot more brake pressure in a, front, in a straight line off that front brake. 90% of your braking comes off of the front wheel. Now we're going to be doing some upcoming videos just some instructional ones and showing you things like trail braking and how to actually lean your bike so if you are a new 125 rider will be an instructional video coming up on that about how to trail brake and how to steer your bike correctly into corners and obviously mirrors on this We've got these set up quite high, but you can widen these out to get a bigger view of the road behind. Obviously I'm a quite thin rider. If you are on the larger side, there is a way of just Allen key and then moving those mirrors out to 90 degrees off the side, a little bit lower and get a better view of the road. But off of these mirrors I can see very, very well the road behind me but it's nothing better than that obligatory shoulder check and I do like to shoulder check quite a lot I never ever trust mirrors on a bike you're still going to get that blind spot in your mirrors so always make sure you're getting your shoulder checks in now we're occupying position number one locked out at 40 mile an hour and I just want to see holding it at 40 going up a nice big hill how much of that top end speed I am going to lose and I'm trying to keep my wrist in exactly the same position on this so I'm losing about 2 mile an hour but it's not that bad at 40 dropping it down at 38 and a lot of people have said oh I wouldn't be going down a dual carriageway at 40 mile an hour if you're an experienced rider or you've got your wits about you there's absolutely nothing wrong in riding a dual carriageway at this speed even on the little Echo 50s that only do 30 I still take them down the dual carriageway and it's never ever phased me and if you happen to live where your only road is a dual carriageway now 90% of the roads in Milton Keynes are all dual carriageway and they are all between 40 and 60 mile an hour 
so you've got no choice but to do a dual carriageway and even at 30 or 40 mile an hour not a problem and it pulled itself back up to 40 again so loss of two mile an hour and obviously if you're at 50 you're going to lose a couple off of that as well but she pulls effectively up the hills there's still a bit of good engine torque off this engine braking on this is lovely I do, I do like to uh, rev match down the gearbox I tend to use the gearbox more than I do my brakes now we're going to go around the other side back down onto the dual carriageway and obviously I have said over and over again the tyres on these LXRs and most of the LX motos even some of the uh, good name bikes are using the nylon tyres I never have a problem with the nylon tyres and obviously on a wet day today she's sitting planted not a problem at all but you're going to be taking your time a little bit more than you would if you was on a dry day so even on wet weather these tyres are adequate for what they do the only time you're going to lose it is if the tyres are cold you've got a little bit of fuel or muck on the roads or if it's really really wet you are going to lose adhesion on any bike even from 125 right up to the thousands best rubber in the world is not going to help you if you hit a patch of dirt or if you hit a, a little bit of fuel spillage on the road that bike is still going to slide and believe me I have slid a few bikes in my time I've had a couple of high sides where I've held them and that was all due to bad adhesion on the road I'm just going to move out and let this bus out and barreling down the inside lane on me and that is what shoulder checks are for just let him out and sit back down at my 40 mile an hour and shift her back to position 1 Obviously with the amount of drizzle I've got coming down I've no idea what the, uh, the camera's going to look like. There may be a few rain spots on the camera. What we'll do, just give her a quick wipe. There we go. Nice dry camera. Now a lot of people have asked me what camera are you running? I tend to run a Drift Ghost. Now I've got the old Drift Ghost S. It's one of the older cameras. I do not like the new drifts. Very, very buggy. Prone to uh, dumping cards and losing footage. But this little Drift Ghost S, I've never had an issue with it. And obviously this one's a, a four-year-old camera. Anything I have changed is the batteries on it. And I do tend to uh, carry about four or five spare batteries in my bike pack back at the garage so I can uh, swap my cards out and swap my batteries out now my microphone comes out the back of my helmet and it's built into the lining and it's I've tucked it all the way around the inside of the lining and my mic actually is in my cheek pad just to the right of my face tucked inside the cheek pad so hence I can get a nice bit of audio while I'm doing my riding and I've also got the uh, LS2 inbuilt headset on this one as well so should they need to contact me from the garage my phone rings my headset goes off but it's also got a center link on this one and the center comm system is absolutely perfect voice activated as well so you can just hit the button and your Google or your iPhone will take over so it's all voice activated off this as well, just with a press of the button. Now my other cameras, uh, a lot of people have said, have you not tried GoPros? I think GoPros are very, very overrated for the price. So I wouldn't want to be going spending £300 on a GoPro. When my drift does exactly the same, but what I have found, and they are very, very good cameras, they only last for an hour. 
but you can get spare batteries for them and again spare cards and you can get these on eBay or Amazon or any of the shopping sites and they're called action cams HD action cam 1080p and they do a good enough job and you can pick them up for about £12 each I actually have four of them and when we take, tend to take the uh, the ZX out I tend to have uh, one at the front and then one down on the front end roadside so, and then well, obviously when I get to the other end they only last an hour take the camera out put another one in the pack and back on the bike for the run home and then obviously with about five or six spare batteries and they're about six pounds each for the batteries you've got yourself a nice little very cheap camera setup and obviously if you are doing more than an hour get yourself a drift ghost battery on this ghost lasts about an hour and 45 tops obviously depending on uh, what mode I've got it in this little LXR is absolutely pulling fine and I'm currently 6.7 miles in now so half the ride test already done all the levers exactly the right height clutch position is absolutely beautiful on this goes up and down the box absolutely fine indicators horn lights all work very very well it's had a PDI it's had a QC should get back and give the customer a call when we get in and just say some ride video is going to be up tonight and obviously today is Monday and the time is currently around about 11.15 so nice early Monday lunchtime run and obviously yeah, most people I think are now in tier 4 Christmas is cancelled bar humbug and I lost out on a ride yesterday I was uh, due to get out of my usual haunt down to the sausage meet up with a couple of other bikers meet up with Dar um, Barry that came in at the weekend he's got an SE and we were going to go and have a run Sunday but obviously tier 4 knocked all that on the head so hopefully new year things might change and don't go blaming Boris it's not Boris's fault it's all these idiots that decided they wanted to go shopping and if you happen to see the photos of Knightsbridge in London absolutely jam-packed out and no one had got a mask on in the slightest so blame yourself people it's not Boris's fault it's your own fault stay inside when we've got all this online shopping what is the point in having to go down the road to get your essential shopping click and collect people click and collect so almost eight miles in on this one braking is lovely on this and obviously being aware of other traffic around you and then trying to sit as much as I can I'm sitting to the offside now at the moment position free reason being I want that lorry to see me in his mirrors if you're absolutely jammed behind any vehicle you automatically become a sandwich should a car come in too tight behind but position one or position three if you are pulling up in stationary traffic just to make them aware that you are there obviously I tend to use a lot of high vis now and this Australian bike wear is absolutely lovely still got a little bit of drizzle but it's starting to dry off which is good because I as soon as I get back I'm out on a Titan next and that'll be the next ride video to come up after this one but even with a bit of lean on the bike now wet conditions and I tend to know when a tire is about to break away but even putting a bit of lean on that bike more than you should that tyre is sitting there, it's not breaking away at all moving out into traffic with a quick shoulder check and once again quick clean of the camera just get rid of that water off the lens so you can see what is going on 
Now obviously you, uh, you do get your fair weather bikers that don't like going out in the rain. I tend to ride in all conditions. The only thing that would stop me is obviously if there is uh, snow, heavy snow or ice on the roads, then it would be, hmm, think twice. Possibly use public transport for that day or get the car out. But if you are obviously using this all year round as your daily commute, keep your feet down. Nice and steady, keep your feet down. And just take your time. Let your tyres warm up. And obviously if it's a little bit slow, then uh, slow your speed down. Adapt yourself to the conditions. And as we always say, ride to your ability. Never overstep the mark. And ride to adapt yourself to the conditions of the day. A lot of accidents, especially low sides or losing your bike on a corner, is one, bad road conditions, or two, just pure rider inexperience, too fast for the situation. Obviously on my big bikes I tend to ride very, very fast. Within the limits of course, give or take a bit of clock blur. But you should never ever overstretch your limits. Ride within the best of your ability. And if you are into uh, instructional stuff, if you're a new rider and you want to pick up on a few bike tips, there are loads and loads of links to the DDFM crew. Dan Dan the Fireman, DDFM crew, where we analyse and watch a lot of bike crashes. How can they avoid this? And that is on the uh, last page of the website, on my website, redbomb.co.uk. There's a link in there, last two links. One is to the main DDFM page, and the other one is at the bottom of that one, right at the very bottom the instructional videos how to do tight turns how to swerve car in front of you brakes how are you going to swerve around the car even in wet conditions you can swerve especially on something that's got a combined braking system and we always say progressive braking don't go grabbing a handful of front lever or grab a handful of back lever just do braking nice and progressively get that brake pressure and that downforce on that front wheel so obviously this one's a little bit of a longer video just to update you on uh, what we're doing obviously tier 4 we're still open as an active garage we are doing absolutely everything at the moment so a lot of bikes in a lot of services in going to cut back into the urban route now and once again just leaning it through that roundabout she's lovely these tyres hold in very very nicely and obviously I'm riding to the road conditions quick shoulder check move into the inside lane and obviously watching out for cars that are in the incorrect lane it's situational awareness people you should be very aware of what is going on around you all the time as a bike rider so headed back into town Last few miles to put on this bike. And then we can go out and take the little 125 uh, Red Titan out for David. So just a quick couple of quick updates guys. And obviously uh, Customer Scott's going to be watching all this all the way through. Sorry Scott, it is a slightly longer video, I'm babbling on again. But I'm just trying to pack as much into this video as I can for everybody. So a couple of things that we did do at the weekend. Friday night, if you missed it, 
pop on over to the Military Biker. That's a YouTube channel, the Military Biker. Go and have a look in there. I did pop up on the channel for about a couple of hours and uh, we were all chatting bikes, all being merry, all dressed up for Christmas. And obviously in there is uh, a very good friend of mine, another ZZR rider, Z Head. He was in there. We had uh, military biker, obviously, Jim Diesel. Diesel's hog was there from America. Two Indians in Texas, he managed to pop in, but obviously he is a, a full-on EMT trauma nurse. And an, um, an ICU nurse, so he popped in and had to do a quick feed from the car because he was between procedures. So thanks Indians for popping in. Now uh, he's out in Texas. We also had uh, Adamoto in there. We had Roly in. And uh, sorry guys if I forget anybody, but that channel was absolutely packed out with bikers. We even had uh, Gesto and Lane popped in from Spain, just to say hi to everybody. And that is a regular Friday meetup. So if you happen to be uh, on the net, have a wander at Military Biker and give his channel a like and subscribe and uh, all the big motor vloggers tend to hang out in there we were discussing the new uh, Harley Davidson Pan America did go off subject a couple of times um, where we had other stuff in the subjects but watch the video and you'll find out we were having a hoot and obviously uh, all being very very merry a lot of alcohol was consumed that night and I think the feed goes on for about three and a half hours I was there for a couple but uh, He's doing his Christmas lights on the 23rd, so uh, pop in and have a look at that one. And just checking that suspension out over these bumps, absolutely perfect. As I say, a lot of standing water. But she still seems fine around the corners, not an issue. So 12 and a bit miles in. A little bit more to add on. Obviously this little LXR plodding away like it used to and like it should do as well. We never have an issue with these. And obviously a lot of people have commented on the uh, Lex Motor Owners UK about these. Are there any issues with the LXRs? From the very very first lot of LXRs, yes, we did have an issue. And uh, I'm not going to say no, this bike is perfect. There was a lot of issues with this lock system that was getting a lot of water ingress and a lot of electrical issues. Now that was the Generation 1 locks. All the bikes that are coming out now all have the Generation 2 locks on them and they're absolutely spot on. No problems at all whatsoever with these locks now. And the only other thing that you're going to find Obviously these are a, a combined braking system on these. And a lot of people saying, oh, uh, when I picked my bike up the brakes were very, very spongy. There is a technical bulletin on all bikes with a CBS. Before we do a PDI or prep that says you must check that combined braking system. Do a quick brake bleed to so say if you notice the brakes are spongy, knock in a brake bleed. And it takes you about 10 minutes to do one of those. Over a speed bump, just to check that suspension, perfect. And that is the only issue that we found with the uh, LXR, just the locks. And we've only, I think, replaced two so far. All oh, the others have been absolutely fine. But it's like anything, if it's not PDI'd or QC correctly, you are going to get issues. So 13 and a bit miles in, heading back to the garage. So as always guys, if you did enjoy today, me wambling on, uh, telling you about all the updates and uh, the YouTube vlogs and everything, pop across the, uh, the video, hit the like and subscribe button, don't forget all the uh, 
the bikers that I follow are in each video at the bottom underneath the comments go and check out some of those uh, bikers give them a like and give them a follow all the links to everything now so the garage and all the uh, woo, YouTube feeds all on the website and I've mentioned it once already revbomb.co.uk pop across there all about me on the first page page you need is the social media page there's a link to the Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and YouTube there's also a link to Eclipse Motorcycles the website and the Facebook and then there's that link to DDFM which is underneath as well and you normally find me hanging out on the DDFM channel most nights when we talk about bike awareness and go through a lot of bike videos instructional stuff that's the fun in being a full-time bike rider only a few days to Christmas so whatever you're doing over the Christmas even though it's been absolutely scuppered this year if you're in with your families guys have a good one if you're out on the bike or you're working over Christmas, leave it in the comments below. I think I've got two days or three days off and then we're back into this again. So no rest for the wicked. But whatever you're doing, be well. If you're out riding guys, ride safe, especially in these conditions. Have yourself a great Christmas. If we don't see you before, have a great New Year. There will be a load more videos still to come up though. And until the next time, from RB, and all the team, it's a big goodbye from me. Roll those end credits.